Hey, what is up? Welcome to episode 12 of the ISM show. Today, we are going to start a conversation over the next couple of weeks that we're going to be having about just uh, some of the culture statements uh, in ISM, uh, Illinois Student Ministries. We're also going to be ending our show today with a really fun game called What Am I Sniffing? So hold on really tight. We're going to have a great conversation, and then we're going to play a pretty fun game. And you're probably going to see me gag a lot because I promise you, uh, I, I, I can't stand really bad smells. Anyways, uh, roll it. Hey, welcome everybody. It is great to see you, episode 12. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but uh, Cole hit a growth spurt and he grew a beard. Cole, how you doing today, man? Dude, I'm fantastic right now. I mean, I just feel like a man now. That's Great. awesome because you weren't before. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you were a little boy, exactly. And now you've grown into yeah. now you've grown into a man. I stopped uh, just running all the time. I actually started lifting some weights, and you know, yeah, probably took some Nugenics. Listened to Frank Thomas on that commercial. You know what I mean? Grew a beard. Yeah, yeah. Put uh, on my got, face. Got the testosterone flowing again. Put the chia seed on my face. And just... <laughs> Uh, just so you guys know, this is not Cole Kelly's. No. What? Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, dude, this is actually uh, Jake Wiesman, uh, one incredible youth pastor. I'm all right. And one incredible <laughs> three-time reigning championship team captain. Uh, that's right. How are you feeling? Are you a little bit like, are you having withdrawals from camp? We should actually be in the middle. We should go to the field. Of week two of camp. Like, you should be here with Uncommon Student Ministries. Winning right Trying now. to lead the purple Not trying. team. Not trying. To, <laughs> to their trying. fourth Just winning. championship in a row. Are you, yeah. like, are you having withdrawals right now? Yeah, I'm super bummed. I've been, like, talking to the students, and they're all just, like, like really, like, crushed. And, like, so we're doing a our own, like, mini- Color Wars, we call it the Uncommon Games, so we can get out our competitive edge. So are all like, of you the purple team? We're all purple team. <laughs> <laughs> just shades of purple. You're all just shades we're, of purple. We're right? all purple team, and then we're going to make, like, the the we're going to make just a few kids orange team and just, like, whoop up on them. Oh, no. <laughs> See, right. listen, this is, like, this the rivalry the that is this growing the between year. the the purple team and the orange team the is Phoenix legit. Suns, you guys better be ready. They're we can coming. We call it the Phoenix Suns rivalry because purple, orange, Phoenix Suns. I mean, we're just – I was legitimately scared last year. This year I was a lot less so because I feel like our team was like okay. – they're like – they realized like, oh, shoot, we can't just roll in and just dominate now. There's another team. So are you going to – are you – okay, that's okay. Are you sitting here saying right now, well, we came in last year and we just kind of walked our way to the championship and we almost gave it away. This year we were going to take it seriously. So are we you start, saying the orange year, team – are you saying the orange team lost to, like, not, you're not trying purple team? I feel like we started off weak. This last year. And it could just be because you our broke students. like three camp records at the start of camp. <laughs> that relay, one relay. I'm talking like the cheering wasn't like on par like years past. Yeah, the, you weren't saying yes nearly they, we, enough. They weren't saying yes to every single thing. <laughs> they weren't, I mean, our rooms. Did you we guys notice getting, how less annoying the purple team was this year because they weren't saying yes to it every was, little thing? It was slightly less annoying. I was. I was so ready for camp. I had a meme already because, like, you know, Purple's vilified now. We are the villains. And I had the whole Mother Gothel entangled, like, oh, so you want me to be a villain? Oh, now I'll be the villain. And, like, I had that ready. <laughs> like, I reenact, it reenact the whole scene, ready to go. And yeah, now we can't use it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I, I miss camp. But here, here's the thing that I wanted to discuss with you because I know that you – our pretty large Star Wars fan. Is this correct? I would say that is an understatement. Sure. That's an understatement. So are you just a full-on Star Wars nerd? Like you just... Yeah. Is it your favorite franchise of all time? Easy. Easily? Easily. Okay. I like... St I mean, I love I love a lot of things. I love food. I love sports. Yeah. I think like... I mean, obviously, you family. love your wife and kids. Yeah, I won't put Star Wars above them, definitely. Okay, since well, that's a, that's healthy. That's good. Uh, I wouldn't it's put close. Star Wars above church. Okay, but I mean, like, praise him. I feel like 
I know more about Star Wars than I know about sports. I know more about Star Wars than I know about winning camp. So wow, which, that's a lot. He's pretty that's, good at winning camp. He's <laughs> pretty good at winning. We camp. do that. <laughs> Josh, what about you? You like Star Wars? Or are you a fan? Uh, I mean, I guess a, I mean I like the movies and stuff. I like to watch them. I have like trading cards from the original movies from like before I was born. Obviously, I just have them. But I mean, other than that, that's really the yeah. peak of my. I want to call it nerdiness. Your fandom. I don't really know Your enough. fandom. Know a lot. That's yeah. the peak of like fandom. your yeah. fandom. I'm like I'll watch them. Like if someone's like, "Hey, let's watch Star Wars." Like, yeah, that's cool. Can I get something off my chest? No. I just need to though. But All like, right. I, I really do. do. I need to. Don't do it. I need to say something. I need to say it. It's gonna be wrong. Go for it. I feel like Star Wars is super overrated. Mm. I feel like Star Wars is super overrated. <laughs> There's a fire burning inside me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, no, okay, I, okay. I know. I just. I'm but like, here's the thing. Like, the cartoons are all right. All right. The cartoons are all right. I, I enjoy them, the cartoons. They're well, good. They're amazing. They're all right. Like, but when the cartoon has, been but when like, the cartoon spinoffs have a better storyline, better acting than all of the movies. <laughs> maybe I think Liam Neeson. <laughs> maybe I think it's not better acting. <laughs> maybe I think the movies are just overrated. Could be. I think that's what you're. I think that that's what I would get from your statement currently. What I'm. But what about like Mandalorian? Then it's not a cartoon, but it's still a TV show. Well, I think the Mandalorian's really good. I think it's getting there. Mandalorian. It's, I would watch that if I wasn't a Star Wars fan and still like. Enjoy. Well, okay. See, here's the thing, though. Here's here's my argument with the Mandalorian. Is the Mandalorian just that good? Or is it just so much better than the crappy movies that you think it's good? You know, it's, I think I would just say it's, I mean, being a Star Wars fan too, like, I feel like I have a, I come at it from a super biased opinion, but like, I just, I really, I like, I keep telling, telling Taylor, my wife, like, you would love this show. Like, she watched Gilmore Girls. No, gosh, oh, no. Okay. No, she okay. watched. We so she never watched Star Wars. Okay, and then she took me day one when Force Awakens came out, and she watched it with me. She's like, okay, whatever. And then like we went and saw Rogue One the year after that. Okay, and after she saw Rogue One, she's like, let's watch them all. Like Rogue One as a movie, and I'm still say I would even put it out there like it's probably my favorite Star Wars movie because it's just all around like a standalone good movie, like yeah. on its own. Sure, great movie. I mean the way it ends, it's like. That's an awesome ending. Yeah, I just like. I think Star Wars is very like. It's iconic. It's iconic, and it's like iconic, as a, and I think that's why it has such a huge yeah. following. Because when the original three movies were released, they were so far above the beyond, beyond their time. They were beyond their time oh, with man. like CGI and like oh my gosh, you have these laser swords. That's yeah. what they're called, right? And then you have so. you have the Force, <laughs> you have space, you have these incredible characters and stuff like this. But what you really have in the midst of all of this is you have terrible acting and a terrible storyline. It's like taking this unbelievable frosting and these really great like sprinkles and this beautiful like like fondant and cake decorating and and putting it on top of a turd right like, i would i would cut go through it no you like no. it looks great <laughs> no but you cut into it <laughs> no. it's still a piece of crap you could underneath like the all of this story isn't good like the story of the whole thing is a story of redemption like when you look at it in the in the scope of the whole thing, it is a story of redemption. And like you look at it that way. Do you know how many crappy but, movies are stories of redemption? No, I don't talk about those ones. We're talking <laughs> about Star Wars here. We're talking about one movie, and it's not crappy. So <laughs> great characters. Okay, great well, characters. Great I, characters. Now, yeah, I'll give you that. Like, I'll give okay, you that. like yeah. Let's let's make let's make the new the main character Luke Skywalker a guy who is like. Fresh into acting, like Mark Hamill's first like thing. Mark Hamill, yeah, and you could tell was you better. could tell he was fresh into acting. I, hey, you Mark could tell Hamill this was, was his a, first thing. I love Mark Hamill. I better can't Joker. watch Mark Hamill he in the first. He's the whiniest Joker. baby on the <laughs> planet in those movies. There is listen. Everybody hates Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks is less annoying than Luke Skywalker no. in the original three. Jar Jar Binks is less annoying than Hayden Christensen in episode <laughs> two when he's talking about, I hate sand. It gets everywhere and it's coarse. Like, I. Well, of course he's, he's that way. Yeah. 
It's 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 he's going to be Darth Vader. Well, yeah, <laughs> he's hundred percent. He's a, he's a, he's a he's a buzzkill, but like and and of course he's he going to give children. birth to a whiny baby Luke Skywalker, <laughs> right? But Leia, Leia's I, awesome. Leia, Leia's cool. you know, I mean, strong woman <laughs> needs to pull all this crap together. But she's Pod, she's Padme's like. You know, yeah, she's uh, absolutely, daughter. absolutely. So anyways, this has been enough Star Wars talk. Please leave in the comments, do you think Star Wars is overrated? Or do you think it's the greatest of all time? Or are you maybe like somewhere in between like Josh, where it's like, you know, I don't think it's overrated. I like it. I enjoy it. I'll watch it. Uh, but I'll watch it. You know, uh, you know, I have nothing to do, so I'm going to watch a bunch of cartoons all day, right? And then you have these conversations. You just sit here and listen. I have yeah, so much more arguments. For me, <laughs> like, I just, I just, like, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I love the Marvel Universe, mm -hmm. um, Star Wars. You know, I'll go see the movie. I'll even go see the movies in theaters. I, I just, I, I don't leave the theater going like, wow, that blew my mind. That was incredible. You know what I mean? I would sit and watch all 26 hours and 44 minutes of all Star Wars movies back to back. I would sit down and do that. You would? Or, I mean, I don't know if I could pull off Clone Wars because I think That Clone sounds Wars like something like you should do for Speed the Light. Just a Star Wars marathon? Just a Star Wars marathon. Now, if you throw in, like, Clone Wars, Rebels, and, um, like, Mandalorian, you're looking at Clone Wars itself would take two days, 14 hours, and 30 minutes. This is ridiculous. To, to watch straight through. This is ridiculous. See, here's the problem. <laughs> Star Wars, this is when Star Wars becomes idolatry, Right? And I'm not saying Jake is. is no, I looked idolatrous. up the stat just before we had this conversation as like a po yeah. point. Like I looked this up just before this, so I had to like sound a, informed. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's like the classic, like, uh, like you know, you know that the youth pastor is going to ask you, like, hey, what have you been reading in the Bible? So five minutes before you pull into you have a commentary Bible. Like, so five minutes before you like go to like small group, you're like, crap, man, I better like. <laughs> I better open right. this book. <laughs> Isaiah 54. Man, God's really been speaking to me. <laughs> been reading I been reading been reading Isaiah 54. You won't say when or for how long. <laughs> but you've been reading it. Man, I've been right? reading John 316. Still mm, gets me, man, to right this day. Here in the fields. <laughs> so, you know, talking about small group and talking about like getting back involved in the youth ministry, I think one of the values that that I wanted to discuss today that that I, I, I see is very important to Illinois Student Ministries. And when I talk about a value for Illinois Student Ministries, this is a value that I think uh, should, be, should be universal across all youth ministries uh, in our state, really mm -hmm. in the nation. Uh, but, but today what I wanted to talk about is like a strong sense of community and buy-in for your youth ministry. I think that's so important, especially in the season we find ourselves in right now. A lot of youth groups um, are, are coming out of quarantine and they're trying to figure out what the new normal looks like in this yeah. season. How are we supposed to be meeting? Where are people supposed to be sitting? How far apart do our students need to stay away from each other? And we're trying to balance that all out. We're trying to figure all of that out right now. Uh, and, and in the midst of all of this, we're, we're also trying to contend with like the affections of our students towards our youth ministry, even though our youth ministry cannot be what it what it looked no. like before no. all of this hit. So, can I ask you a question, Jake? Like, can you talk about that? Is that is that like a real struggle right now, trying to get kids <laughs> interested in coming back? It's it's interesting. I mean, so what I've done is we started like just like outdoor meetings because like yeah, that's, that's what our, smart. That's what. Past Eric was comfortable with like that's what like people yeah. you know parents yeah. are comfortable with like yeah. I, I talked to parents I talked to like some of my key leaders um obviously I talked to my lead pastor and found out like kind of like where are you comfortable Wisdom. with Wisdom. yes so <laughs> always out, talk to your lead pastor <laughs> talk to lead pastors talk to parents I mean but like so we started outdoors and our first day back we had like almost 40 kids wow. show up and we just did like we have I mean we have a big parking lot we did a skate party it was well, do something you feel so like, silly but and do like, you feel like kids were excited to be back and back in community and I think stuff so. you know what I mean they were and students are the worst at social distancing I think it's oh, worse 100 well, percent. I think I think kids church kids will listen better to social distancing guidelines than students in Youth oh, yeah. ministry would, but well, um, teenagers are invincible. I don't know if you know that. Oh, they, oh, like, yeah, they can't absolutely. be hurt. Nothing can affect them. They mm -hmm. can't get viruses. You know, so. I watched a kid walk across the parking lot, like, get run over by a car, and then pop up and just keep going. It was so, amazing. It was great. Pretty incredible. <laughs> what? Teenage? <laughs> no, it's just not just. <laughs> His name is Josh Heisman. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Josh Heisman. I've watched him roll golf golf carts and walk out the other side, no problem. 
That is true. That is a true <laughs> statement. Um, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. No, but um, I think like one of the biggest things, one of the biggest challenges coming back is getting students almost like they've been while quarantined talking to only their group of friends. Yeah, yeah. And like getting it to look at like a more the family is back, like as a family, like yeah. bringing everyone in. And one of the things like I would preach on until I blew my face, which whether or not they get it or not, that's on them. Look at you in common. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like the fact that like if someone walks in your door, it's okay if they feel welcomed, but it's better if they feel accepted and like included. That's so good. Like included, yeah. like our first week back, we had new kids show up. Like, cause there was just people hanging out and they're like, Hey, let's go. And some of them were visiting from out of town. So I get that they aren't back, but there's other new kids that have been around. And it's just that, that idea of like, okay, we have people here. Let's include them. Not just what, well, I mean, it's good to be welcomed. Yeah. yeah, it's great. But like when you're included and accepted and like brought in, like intentionally brought in, that's one. And you got, it's great when the leaders do it. I can go and talk to a kid and make him feel included. But when it's like a student does it, that's when the youth ministry is really clicking, really going and So I wanna stop I wanna I wanna stop you right there. Like so I really like what you were saying because there's a difference between being welcomed mm-hmm. and being included. Yeah. Welcome, from what I'm understanding, has more to do with systems. Yeah. Right? Like so as a youth pastor, I'm gonna create these systems and these uh, to make sure that every kid that walks into the door feels Welcome. Yes. So that's going to be my signs. You know, you are welcome here. You are family here, right? It's going to be the gift bag that we yeah. give to the new kid. A greeter at the uh, table. Uh, it's going to be a greeter. It's going to be the youth leaders going up to that new student mm-hmm. and saying, oh my gosh, welcome. It's going to be the youth pastor from the stage saying, hey, if you're new, if you have any questions, blah, 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 yeah, right? It's, so that's those are the systems that are put in place to make a, a, a student feel yeah. welcome. It's it's starting to chip at some of the barriers that they're feeling. But I really like what you said, that there's a difference between feeling welcome and feeling included or feeling in, uh, accepted. And so you would say, you would argue, that for a, a student to feel accepted, that's actually not on the systems. That's not on the leaders. That's, the that's, on, that's on the culture. That's, that's the on culture. the other students. Yes, So what do you think other students need to do? And I want you, like, okay, so if you're a student in Illinois Student Ministries, I need you to listen to this one, right? Listen up. So if you're a student in a youth ministry and you're speaking as a youth pastor, like, what do you think students should do for other new students to get them beyond the welcome and make them feel included? I mean, the like, basic, like, the easiest thing to do is like, hey, come sit by us. Or, hey, you know, I haven't seen you here. Get to know them a little bit. You know? Sure. Um, one of the biggest things I feel like, and just in general as a human being, is remember their name. You know, yeah. like, like that's a that's an easy one. That's like a layup almost. I mean, sometimes I'm not really always great with names sometimes, as, especially as a team captain. I learned I'm not good with names. I call kids different names all the time, but I try. <laughs> um, but like, okay, learn their name. Have them come sit by you. If you're youth group has like a concession stand, buy them a snack, like just something, introduce them to somebody else. But like students come and like, Oh, I'm going to go see my friends. I can't wait to see my friends. These are the same people you go to school with. These are the same people you're in chat groups with. You're Snapchatting them in every day, but this new person here, like you don't need to be with the same person. Like if I hang out with Josh every day and then like, you're the new guy, you come up, like, I could be at youth group. I'm like, oh, but I want to sit with my friend because I get, that's who I sit by at youth group. But we got the new kid. Yeah. Like, include them then in the group. And we don't think about it. Like, yeah. I, I think it's uh, – and again, this isn't like, okay, we're not putting students over the barrel right now. No. Like, I, I, I just think it's so easy for us not to think about – adults don't even think about it. Oh, right? adults are – just as bad, if not worse. And, I mean, and, like, and, and, yeah, and so, so like with with students, though. I mean, like think about the new kid coming into the youth ministry. Not only is he contending with feeling like an outsider, mm-hmm. not only are they dealing with social anxiety, not only are they dealing with insecurity and how people are looking at them, and not only are they dealing with like how incredibly awkward it is. Oh, for sure. To walk into a new setting with a bunch of people that you may or may not know Especially on their turf and church. not your turf. Yeah. And you don't know. And, and if it's a kid that's never been in church, it's it's even more awkward because it's not just about like 
the social implications. It's about not understanding the programming and what's going on. Like it's not understanding why we're singing songs and raising our hands. And it's not understanding like why I'm sitting in a seat and looking forward at, at this guy talk to me for 25 minutes out of a book, you know, yeah. like I don't understand what it means to walk up to the front and respond. Like there's just a lot of things to overcome. Exactly. The one thing that a new kid shouldn't have to overcome is the other people in the room. Exactly. They shouldn't feel uh, like left out. They shouldn't feel like they have to sit by that. They shouldn't be sitting in a seat with just a youth leader next to them. Yeah. Like a youth leader shouldn't be the person sitting by them. Yeah. And I've seen it like, and I get it. Like I get that students like just show up and they're kind of just, they do their thing, but like it, it has to be an intentionality. And like I said, like the culture has to be created where we look for those people. And I, I mean, I have my like core students and I'm like, Hey, we got to be on the lookout for people. Even if it's like, like youth to this week, look for new people. One guy, one girl, look for new people. You don't hang out with your friends. You look for new people. And then the next week you don't, you can sit by your friends because the next week these people got it covered. And just like, you could, you almost kind of create like, it's in a sense like a system, but like the culture where like, you know, you can use almost system to kind of create the culture where they just, yeah, it's like in the back of the mind, they're just looking for new people to walk in and be like, oh, or not even just sometimes new people. Sometimes it's the kid who's been there, but has just always been on the outside. Like, how do you get that person who's like the outside kid back in, like yeah. into this, into the circles, like the kid who won't talk. Like, yeah. even if you try, they don't show up to the events. Even if you reach out to them, they kind of ignore, but they still sometimes show up. Like you got to, there's got to be a way to like just rope them in. And it's not going to be the leaders. It's going to yeah. be the students like making them feel loved and welcomed and a part of the group. hundred percent. And and I think a lot of times what happens is, is students just kind of wait for leaders to lead the way on this. It, it, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the youth pastor or the youth leaders. And if you want to create that culture where people feel welcome and things aren't clicky, uh, and here's the thing, like I always hear this in, in youth ministries and it, and it makes me kind of nutty is when students are like, man, I just, I just, I left that youth ministry because there were, it was so clicky and I left that youth ministry because there were so many people that like, you know, there were so many groups and there was so many, so much this, and there was favoritism and, and all of this stuff. Like, okay, the youth pastor can only do so much to stop that. Yeah. One person. Right. If you if you want the youth ministry to stop being clicky and to be more inclusive and to be more welcoming, students, that's that's on you, yeah, right? Like, absolutely. if you notice that that's a problem, you need to do something about it. Yeah. Like, think about a new kid walking in and not understanding the inside jokes, right? Oh, for sure. And so there's this group of students and it's like, okay, well, at, there's, they're, they're telling these inside jokes and then they've got like, uh, this, this thing that they do in the youth ministry. Maybe it's a game they play, uh, you know, before things get started. And it's just that group that knows how to play that game. And it's specific to your youth ministry. And then they don't ask the new kid to sit with them. So the new kid's just finding a spot, um, and, and it's awkward on them. And, and then that group that was playing the game before now is talking about going to Dairy Queen afterwards as a group of friends. Please invite them. And it's on. like, oh, okay. So I, so I showed up. I didn't fit in. Nobody paid attention to me. You want to know what? That kid's leaving and going, ah, well, they're, they're clicky. Yeah, exactly. And that's, I mean, it leaves a bad taste. So you represent the church. You represent the, the youth pastor. You represent the youth group. Everything wrong. And the thing is, like, what I tell my students is, like, like Uncommon Student Ministries isn't my ministry. It's your ministry. Yeah, like, 100%. It is, it is not mine. You are the ones who are going to create the culture. You are the ones who are going to, I mean, like, I can speak into the culture. I can tell you like the direction that I believe that we should go, but it's not, I mean, I'm not going to be the one that makes it happen. So students like own the ministry, just own it. It's yours. Like it's your ministry. You get it for sixth grade to your graduate. It's your ministry. So, I mean, especially as the older kids too, like set that, set the bar for the other kids. Josh, speak up on this because you've been, you've been quiet. And obviously Jake and I have been kind of dominating the conversation This isn't Star Wars, man. Yeah, this is so youth ministry. So I mean, you're a little closer to this next generation, and and it, because you you're 21 now, and you just turned 21. So happy birthday, Josh! Thank you. Happy birthday! Thank you. 
Really proud of you. Yeah, made it. Way to turn 21. But, like, speak, speak to this, to your generation, about how important community is and a, and a healthy, welcoming, and inclusive community is in youth ministry today. Um, well, the thing that comes to mind is, um, I think we've talked about it before, but the idea that someone's going to listen, the idea that someone's going to be willing to sit and like actually take in what someone is saying, they're not going to do that unless they know they're cared for, they know that um, they're not just alone, they know that they're in this with someone else. So, I mean, the kid just sitting in youth ministry, the new kid who's, I mean, just there, doesn't really have any friends yet, not really sure what's going on, he goes in and just sits down in the chair and just waits for service to start because he doesn't know anyone. Um, exactly. Doesn't know anyone. Doesn't know who to talk to. So he just goes and sits down, um, and then just goes that way through the whole service and then leaves without really saying anything. I mean, that kid's not really. I don't. I don't think that kid's really going to hear anything. So I mean, it's important that um, we have people that are willing to step out and say something to them. Step out and like invite them over with them. Invite them to sit with them or something. Because I mean, you could have all the best things in the world to say. You could have all the right answers, but if you're not showing them that you care. If you're not showing them that you love them, then they're not going to care. Yeah. They're not going to care at all. They care more. They're going to care more that you love them and didn't listen to you more than they're going to listen to you and didn't know that you care. Yeah. yeah. That's so good. And uh, another thing that I hear a lot too is like students, they'll come into the youth ministry and they're like, oh, well, hold on, time out. I'm, I'm just here to be, I'm just here to be taught. I'm just here to, I'm just here to grow. Mm-hmm. Uh Yes, you are there to be taught. Yes, you are there to grow. Um, but you are also there to serve. Um, serving is a part of growth. Serving oh, is a part of the learning process. And I, 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 I get so sick of, of, of people who will show up to church and just, and just be consumers. They're just there to take everything in, and they're not there to give anything of themselves and and they're the first ones to complain too exactly why because you're a consumer right and so and so if 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 like the word wasn't good enough for you or if worship wasn't so so and it affects like 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 your experience at the church but you are doing nothing to pour into the people that are to the left and to the right of you then I'm sorry you've turned your christianity into some sort of like really really gross like st- form of consumerism. Yes, exactly. And students, when you show up to your youth ministry, and I'm talking to the saved kids, I'm talking to the kids that grew up in church, I'm talking to my pastor's kids right now, I'm talking to the kids who who, who have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You are not just showing up to your youth ministry to be fed. You're showing up to your youth ministry to be, to be fed and to grow, but also to help others grow mm-hmm. and be fed as well. You are part of the army that is winning back territory. Like it's just it it just it just boggles my mind when when these kids who who show up to church and have been a part of church their whole life, they've been these church kids and they show up and they sit in in the youth ministry and they're some of the most judgmental, <laughs> some of the most harsh and in 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 some of the most like distracting students to kingdom growth that we can have. And I know yeah. this is a generalization, but it's a dang good generalization. Yeah. And, and, I, and I just want to get to the point where, like, the kids who spend the most time with Christ actually look the most like Christ. Exactly. And Christ was a servant. He yeah. served. He yeah. went out and he served others. He did stuff. You're going to grow, obviously, you're going to grow more when you serve, more so than if you just consume. I mean, that's why it says, don't be a hero of the word, be a doer of the word. <laughs> like, it's in the Bible. Yeah. Just go do it. Yeah, amen. And, and you know, for Illinois Student Ministries as a whole at our events, my dream is for youth ministries from all over the state to show up at a campground or to show up at a convention center in Springfield. And, man, like, it's instantly family. Yeah. It's not like youth ministry sizing each other up and judging each other. It's just the family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the kids from Pittsfield and the kids from inner city Chicago, like seeing each other. And I'm not like, it's not like a corny movie where they're like running across the wheat field, like in slow motion to like embrace each other and spin each other. But it's family. Yeah. You know, like 
I'm going to fight for you. I've got your back. I love you so much. And when you go to the altar and you're contending with the things that have been holding you back, I'm going to surround you. I'm going to lay my hands on you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to let you cry on my shoulder. I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to get your back. Like, yeah. When these, and, and I know like at camp, like right, like it's, we oh, were yeah. talking I'm about gonna, I'm also going to spike on you in nine square too. Don't oh, worry. 100%. Like, I'm going to come down on you hard. Because that's square. what the family does. But yeah. like, it, like once the, once the team competition is over. Which isn't the important part. Let's be there's, real. <laughs> we're, it, it's not the important part it, at all. But once the team competition is over, like we all come together and we're worshiping as one family. We're taking yeah. care of one another. It's the kids from Decatur and the kids from Bethalto as one family loving each other. It's not that youth ministry and this youth ministry and that team color and that team color. Yeah. It's all of us as as sons and daughters of the living king working together and pressing in the same direction. And our world needs that more than ever right now. And that's oh, why absolutely. community is such a huge value for Illinois student ministries. And the architects of community are the students. Absolutely. And if and if it's our leaders that are constantly trying to be the architects of this of 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 of, of community, and our students have no interest in it, it's just it's just not going to work. It's, it's going to fail. The students are letting down their own ministry. Yeah, we've had we've had a couple of rants, couple and of rants. they were good rants. Uh, but behind every rant is a belief in this generation. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, it's like dang, we see so much in you. We 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 want to turn so much of the ministry over to you. Yeah. And it's like we have this we have this whole generation of, of teenagers that's like we are filled with ideas, we are filled with love, and we are filled with expectations of what the world should look like. And and, and we're just like, oh, amazing. Yeah. Do it. Exactly. <laughs> like just do it. Don't just post about it. Yeah, like so so if there's rants, it's it's because the rant exists between who you say you are and what you're actually doing. Right? And so it's, it's just this, it's, it's our way of like saying, okay, let's get the idea and the action uh, to live in the same space. And that's kind of where the youth leader has to step in, like give some direction to that, that passion or that like, oh yeah, the students have it. And sometimes they just need someone to kind of like, this is how you channel, like maybe just walk them through. Oh, there's a lot of passionate idiots yeah. out there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, I think social media has proven that. Over and over again. Over and over. <laughs> I can open up and my over Facebook again. right now and within like the first five posts probably see like, something and be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Passion isn't a virtue unless it's pointed in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> can we just can we just can we just go ahead and say that? Like Amen. I don't think you're an awesome person because you're passionate. No. You gosh. can be passionate about something completely asinine and stupid. And that just makes you look like a bigger idiot. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're super passionate about it, right? Yeah. Like passion isn't the value. Uh, passion, it, it, the direction of the passion is 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 the value. And and that's the thing. That's where the youth pastor does step in. Yeah. And it's like, hey, I love your passion. I love your emotion. I love that vim and vigor. I need you to point it this direction, yeah. right? Because let's if you do, this. you are going to be so much more let's do this. effective, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Um, but what we're going to do is uh, we are going to take a quick break and then come back and smell things. What are we going to smell? We don't That's know. That's the mystery. Oh. <laughs> That's the mystery. So get ready, everybody, <laughs> with, with a quick transition and with some movie magic. We are going to play a quick game called What? Am I sniffing? Whoever can identify the things we are sniffing the most will win. Ready? Three, two, one. And we're back, everybody. And just like that, we can't see a thing. Uh, And that's good because we have to use our noses to identify certain items from Zach's house that he brought over to the ISM studio slash office. So we are going to go ahead and begin uh, this contest to see who can identify the most items just with their schnoz. Let me know when. It's in front of you. <laughs> that reaction does not bode well. He said, oh. Is that, uh, <laughs> it just dripped on me. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. I'm I ready. I'm ready. It. 
Okay. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Sardines. Fish. Vegetables. It's a salmon. Ah! It dripped on me. So does that mean... Does, Twice. Like, does me saying fish win? Well, I said... You said sardines. said sardines, but that's the wrong kind of fish. And I said fish, which is like... The wrong kind of fish as a well. A generalization. It's half a point. All right. I All right. should get half a point. And fish eat... And, and fish eat vegetables. <laughs> And <laughs> <laughs> when you said vegetables, I'm like, that guy's way off. <laughs> Jesus, what is that? Lord in heaven. Oh, it's musky. Wait, hold on. This is a good indicator that none of us have the coronavirus, you know? You can't what smell the heck is it, that? it's like a symptom. What is that? Oh. I get one more sniff too. After, your, after Josh is done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about what it is. I'm thinking about what it is, and it's making me sick because I think I have bacteria in my nose holes right now. I don't even like, know. Like foreign bacteria. Okay, re- yeah. One, two, three. Sock Dirty along. sock. sock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was my one of my Star Wars flip flops. Oh. <laughs> hey, we get a point though, right? Or at least half a point. A I sock has touched it. It, it. Okay, so it has that. It has that foot smell. So we were there. Yeah. We what did you guess, point. Jake? What did you guess? I'm not even gonna go there. What did you guess? I was like cologne. <laughs> <laughs> hey Taylor. <laughs> okay, item number three. Here we go. Oh, in front of me. I have oh. my new cologne. <laughs> oh. Musk. <laughs> oh, I like that reaction. <laughs> Chris is losing cookies. Oh my gosh! What is that? This is in your apartment? No, uh, I got from the ISO mom. I know what that is. Hold on, I need one more. That's something from this office? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. What is that? Oh, I know, I know what that smell is. Wait, wait. I'm not processing. Uh, it's got to be some kind of food. All right, just guess. Okay, I know what it is. Count it down, Zach. All right, one, two, three. Four oh, trash. Uh, it was the original Louisiana, the perfect hot sauce. Oh. It was a hot sauce. Dang it. I said olives because I didn't know. Hey, horseradish is like kind of spicy or hot. I, mean, I think I put oh. my nose in it. It was a hot sauce. I knew. So. Oh, we are doing, we are doing terrible. Okay, here I go. Ready? Let me know. Okay. Mm. Yes. Smell good? I mean, it doesn't smell bad. I think I know exactly what it is. We should be smelling coffee beans in between to clear. Oh, oh that's. I think that's pretty simple. That I think one. That's a pretty simple one. But now, now because it's simple, do you have to be more specific? Right. Can we get a? This bonus one's pretty point? good. That's what I like. That. Can we get a bonus point? All right. Count it down, boys. Three, two, one. Tide. Deodorant. Soap. Tide. Deodorant. Tide of, uh, what is it? Laundry soap detergent. Oh, that's good. I'm calling it deodorant. No, that's that's a soap. I said soap. All right, it was laundry detergent. What? Gosh. Oh! Josh is a Are you point. kidding me? <laughs> oh, what is the? Uh? Is it durian fruit? Keep in mind, you're smelling my hand, too. Your hand smells horrible, Zach. Where's? Oh, is, this, is, that, is this Josh or me? <sighs> me? I can't identify that at all. I know what it is. That smells. That smells awful. <clears throat> yeah, I got that. That smells. That smells like okay. So like when you walk into Clark Hall, bottom floor. No, that's not what that smells like. I know exactly what that is. That's not the same smell. All right, got it, boys. Three, Three two, one. Sharpie. Permanent marker. I got nothing. Uh, Jake and Josh got it right. It was a sharpie. Ooh, High yeah, five. Three, Oh, I just see your face. <laughs> that's disgusting. That is was there a else? sharpie. Wait, is Josh winning then? Uh, that's it. Dang it, I Josh won! got two points. Oh, come on! Are you kidding me? Well, I beat Chris. And everybody, we're back. And as you can see, Josh is still trying to figure out life with his hat, which is totally okay. That means at 21, you too don't have to have life figured out. Yep. There it is. Very nice. Hey, Josh. Fantastic. Since you didn't do a lot of talking, would you like to close out the show? <clears throat> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just go ahead. Mm-hmm. It's right. your time to shine. 
Thanks for just watching this episode of the ISM Show. If you like the shirt I'm wearing or any of the merch over here, you can check out our website, get some merch for yourself. And yeah, we'll see you next time on the ISM Show. For episode 13. Episode 13. Yep. And that was your reward for winning the sniff off. Good job. Thank you. You have a great schnoz. Thank you. See you guys next week. <laughs>